human rights crisis. Welcome to the World Press Freedom Conference 2020 in The Hague. We're in the World Forum here. We celebrate today the World Press Freedom Day and the International Day to end impunity for crimes against journalists. There, there can be no press without freedom. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Without press freedom, freedom of expression being protected, you cannot have a true democracy. All other freedoms flow from it. To be able to question power, it's an essential condition. We should be open to crisis. I would like the world to be more aware about the threats that we as journalists are facing. Lies laced with anger and hate spread faster and further than facts. I have a responsibility to do all we can to make sure that they can do their work in safety. This important event is an opportunity. I think if you don't have hope, you're going to throw in the towel very quickly. What we need is more international courage and robust action. Renewing the conversation around press freedom. We stand a chance to win. The power of the people is stronger than the people in power. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a recap of day one. Welcome to day two of the World Press Freedom Conference 2020. Thank you for joining us for another exciting day, jam-packed with inspiring debates, interviews, videos and talks. And in our studio we have our guest Diana Jimenez, we'll be talking to you later. Welcome here. Mm -hmm. And before we get down to business, here's a reminder of what our conference features mean for you. Those of you who weren't here yesterday, um, this year's conference is very special as it is merged between in-person and digital elements. Let's have a reminder of what that means for you. The World Press Freedom Conference might be digital this year. It's certainly no less interactive than a real-life conference. When logged in, you will find yourself on the homepage where you can navigate through all features. We've set up an innovative conference platform on which you can easily view sessions on several channels, some of which translated in French, Spanish and Arabic. Explore our cinema, filled with fascinating films and documentaries about press freedom and related topics. You can also visit the virtual exhibitions or check out the library with interesting reports from our interactive discussions. And of course, the most beautiful part of it all, we can still connect with each other. There are many ways to network with other participants and chat during sessions. And in some sessions, you can even ask live questions. Check out our speakers and sessions and create your own personal conference agenda. On behalf of the World Press Freedom 2020 team, have fun. Today is Human Rights Day. We celebrate that 72 years ago, the United Nations adopted the Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Fun fact, Jana, maybe you didn't know this either. Did you know that the six-page declaration holds the record for the most translated document on Earth after the Bible? It has been translated into 370 languages and dialects from Akhbaz to Zulu. But to talk about the human rights, we have in our studio again Diana Jimenez. Welcome from Venezuela. She works at Alianza Holanda in Venezuela, a Dutch-based organization for Venezuelans with a Dutch link and uh, vice versa. What is it exactly that your uh, organization does? 
We are an organization formed by Venezuelans and friends of Venezuela who uh, live in the Netherlands and we feel that uh, based in the Netherlands we can help um, with the crisis in Venezuela. Uh, we are very worried about what is happening in Venezuela and we uh, therefore get together and find ways to, to help. In the, I have to uh, put it in, in, uh, in a scenario. Is Venezuela was a w very wealthy country and uh, in less than 20 years has gone to a country where nine, nine out of 10 people do not have uh, money to buy uh, basic needs. Uh, we have uh, 5 million uh, people, uh, uh, refugees, um, all over the world. Uh, Are a lot of people in your organization and in Ho Holland also refugees? Or? Some, some of the people uh, are refugees and, uh, and the Netherlands also has uh, refugees from, the ne from Venezuela. Uh, so, uh, political as, um, asylo, asylum. Asylum, yes. Asylum. So, uh, the, the uh, elections were uh, Monday. Um, has that stirred a lot of uprise uh, in Venezuela again? The, um, there is a lot of uh, l less hope, but there is also um, a lot of repression. So, uh, even though there, there are uh, protests, uh, the repression uh, managed to, to, to silence it. And that is exactly the, the issue at the moment. Uh, when there is no news on Venezuela, does not mean it's a good news. No, because I can imagine there's a lot of censorship too. There is a lot of censorship, and so uh, reporters um, are uh, trying to get information, but uh, there are a lot of limitations as well. For, uh, for example, it's very difficult to find uh, gasoline in a country that is an oil producer, so uh, uh, people make lines of 20 hours to obtain, to be able to get gasoline, and that's uh, just the basics. So from there on, you can have a, a lot of difficulties to be able to report on what is really happening. Then, uh, well, the, uh, the internet doesn't work, so uh, that is the other alternative for journalists um, that they have used a lot. Yes. Um, internet, social media has been a, a way to, to spread the word and still, and then we have a lot of failures on internet. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really hard to get the right information to the right place. You've made uh, uh, an, an assignment of the Dutch Embassy in Venezuela. You made a documentary uh, about these problems that was quite a um, disturbing uh, documentary. But uh, we can show a bit of that at the end, which shows a little bit of the hope. Um, let's watch it first and then I'll, I'll ask you about it. Mucha gente me conoce porque siempre ando en una moto. No soy el que la maneja, pero a mí me gusta mucho observar. Soy bastante observador y tomo esas visiones de vida, esas formas de vida, documento, reporto todo lo que vive el venezolano a través de una moto. Creo que he podido representar un poco ese venezolano de a pie que, que está en el país y que puede expresar con base lo que estamos sintiendo. Yo me siento muy feliz de ser venezolano y de vivir en Venezuela. Yo soy un hombre muy esperanzador, tengo mucha fe que las cosas van a cambiar y yo estoy seguro que Venezuela un día va a estar en libertad. Venezuela no se ha ido, Venezuela sigue ahí. Yo tengo mi país arraigado en las venas, en la piel. Mi nombre es Luis Alfredo Lavarrieta Rodríguez y me encanta la osadía, soy bien aventurero. Soy una persona honesta, franca, pero sobre todo llena de pasión por lo que hace. Y seguiré aquí, en Venezuela, mientras la vida me lo permita. Que viva Venezuela. Sí, y puedes ver el documento completo. documentary. Periodismo and Dictatura, or Journalism under Dictatorship in our cinema. And there is another uh, documentary Alianza has made, and it's premiering... So where? We are premiering it online. Online? Uh, so the uh, documentary is called um, Seguimos Informando or uh, We Continue Informing. Yes. And we premiere it online on, the, on our website, uh, Alianza 
HV, so Alianza Holanda Venezuela, dot NL, very important. Uh, yes. <laughs> so what does it mean to you when you see these uh, images? Uh, well, uh, Luis Olavarrieta is, uh, is an amazing journalist, uh, but it's, it's also uh, one example. I, I like this documentary of Luis Olavarrieta because it's, it shows one example of uh, one journalist. It's very easy, digestible, and um, he, um, yeah, he has managed to have a career even though uh, the repression and the censorship. And uh, that's... Uh, but then these images are amazing. It's, uh, it's really the beauty of Venezuela and the spirit of, uh, yeah, of freedom and the spirit of well, hope that we need. And Luis, for example, has been a very inspirational uh, leader uh, within his uh, subject. So um, I love that we are able to present it in the cinema, in this platform. Yes, but this is this is a, a good example of hope and, and, and that there is still hope and love in Venezuela, but you also have uh, examples of censorship. Yes, correct. It's important to, uh, to also say uh, Luis has been detained uh, a few times. Um, however, his position uh, being a very well-known person uh, yeah, protects him in a way. And there are other cases where there are uh, very serious uh, also uh, uh, violations uh, against uh, human rights. So we have, for example, Luis Carlos Diaz, another uh, journalist. He's very active on the online and he was detained last year. He not only detained, he was uh, forcibly, forcibly disappeared. Okay. Uh, uh, for for many hours, and uh, he was released only because a lot of, there was a lot of uh, noise about his detention, and even uh, the UN Human Rights uh, uh, Commissioner talk talk about his case and and, uh, and tweeted about his case. Yes, and only then he was released, and that's also my example of how important it is to have the support from outside. Yes. To, and especially the online support, because online is, of course, a very big weapon it's in the struggle. Yes. Uh, it's amazing. Online is really important uh, for this uh, uh, human rights uh, defense. And in the case of censorship, it's really important. Yes. I have another example of... Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you later on. First, uh, we have to say we are staying in the Latin American vibe. as so We do a quick check-in with our Dutch embassy in Cuba, where there has been a workshop for cartoonists. To tell you all about this, here's Miguel Morales Madrigal. My name is Miguel Morales Madrigal. I'm a Cuban cartoonist. I'm also a doctor. I started drawing cartoons as a hobby four years ago as a way of releasing tensions and expressing ideas. It has motivated me to keep learning and drawing, and now it is a central part of my life. Being a cartoonist in a world where censorship has been increasing is challenging. However, cartoons are a great vehicle for transmitting sensitive and complex messages to a broad audience. The community of cartoonists is decreasing day by day. In Cuba, there are fewer and fewer young cartoonists with fresh and renewed ideas. I think we need to empower and repeat more young artists and give them opportunities to produce their art. I also think there should be more female cartoonists and increased diversity of ideas and messages. Cartoons are a powerful weapon that transcend the barrier of language. No matter your school or grade education, a single image is so powerful and capable of generating opinions and debates about a certain situation. It can be the spark that makes feelings, frustrations and renewed ideas flourish and change the destiny of one person or the destiny of a whole nation. I just gave a workshop for fellow cartoonists there here in Havana at the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It was a very great exchange and debate about what it means to be a cartoonist in Cuba and their role for society. The world needs cartoonists and the art. One day, I might be handless and legless, but as long as there is a part of my body that is capable of holding a pencil, I will be making cartoons. 
thank you, Diana Jimenez, for being in our studio. And uh, be sure all to watch the documentary uh, you can see on the, online. And 2020 has been a crazy year. The spread of COVID-19 as well as the Black Lives Matter movement have fueled protests around the world. Up next, watch our talk show moderated by Lebanese journalist Joe Malouf. He will bring together an extraordinary panel to reflect on the role of journalism in these unprecedented times.